Today we'll be taking a look at problem 1.8 from Griffith's Introduction to Quantum Mechanics 3rd edition. In this problem we are asked to add a constant v0 uh, independent of x as well as t into the wave function. In classical mechanics adding a constant independent of x as well as t isn't going to change anything but what about quantum mechanics? So here we're going to show that the wave function actually is going to pick up a time dependent uh, phase factor uh, given as e to to the negative i v naught t over h bar, and then it asks us to describe what effect this has on expectation values of dynamic variables. So we're just going to start off with the Schrodinger equation. So, of course, you know, Schrodinger equation, we have uh, d psi dt is equal to i h bar over 2m, d squared psi dx squared uh, minus i over h bar v times psi. Okay, and we're just going to call this kind of like our equation one. So this is, we're going to reference back to this as we compare at the end. Um, at this point now we're going to say, okay, well let's let phi of x comma t uh, represent the wave function um, with that potential um, v naught added. So let's let psi uh, phi of x t be the wave function the wave function uh, with potential uh, v of x t plus v naught. All right. So in that case, then well, we're going to say, well, let's rewrite the uh, Schrodinger equation. d phi dt is equal to i h bar over two m d squared psi uh, d squared phi d x squared. Uh, minus i over h bar. And then at this point, uh, we might as well expand it out. So we're going to have v of x t uh, times phi. And then we also have minus i over h bar um, v naught times phi. All right. So at this point, you know, we can kind of move things around here, and, and this is where we have to know a little bit about differential equations in order to solve this, but uh, you know, let's get it into a better form here. We're going to say d phi dt uh, plus i over h bar v naught phi is equal to i h bar over 2m d squared phi dx squared minus i over h bar v phi. Okay, so we just moved uh, one of those terms over to the other side. And yeah, so at this point, like I said, we're going to need a little bit of knowledge of differential equations to solve this. We're going to use the integrating factor method. So I'm going to just write that out here so you can refer to that, the integrating factor method. And what this method essentially tells us is, hey, the, you know, there's a easy way to solve this kind of differential equation um, that is of this sort of form where we have kind of like a dy dt, I'll write that a little cleaner, dy dt plus some a of t times y is equal to b of t. When we have something of this form, we can say that i, which is the integrating factor, is equal to e to the integral of a of t dt. And essentially what we're going to do then, uh, the integrating factor method says that if we have this, then we can pull out, you know, we can create this integrating factor. And what we do then is we integrate, or we sorry, we multiply that integrating factor on the left side and on the right side. And that is going to simplify our uh, differential equation to in such a way that we'll be able to solve it. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So for the equation above right here, we can write out that i is going to be equal to e raised to the i over h bar uh, v naught. And then this integral um, where t is our variable and we're going to use ds. S is just a dummy variable here. So that equals e to the i v naught t over h bar. A 
We're going to multiply both sides by i. So multiply both sides by i. And this is where it's going to get a little messy, but it's going to clean up. So we have d phi dt e to the i v naught t over h bar. That's our integrating factor uh, plus i over h bar v naught phi again e to the i v naught t over h bar. The integrating factor equals i h bar over 2m d squared phi dx squared e to the i v naught t over h bar minus i over h bar v phi e to the i v naught t over h bar. All right, so we're going to kind of reverse chain rule on the left hand side here. So uh, you can see that if we rewrite the left hand side as d dt of e to the i v naught t over h bar times phi, which is which is really phi of x comma t, but I'm not writing that here. You see that that's going to require chain rule in such a way that we're going to get the left hand side back. Okay, so we're just kind of reversing that here. And then I'll go ahead and write out the left hand side again. Well, I'll just copy it here to make it easy. Left hand side is still the same here. We're just focusing that for this line. So going on, uh, we can write d dt of e to the i v naught t over h bar times phi is equal to i h bar over 2m d squared dx squared of phi times e to the i v naught t over h bar because that term right here, this is independent of x, so really we can pull that in with the phi as we rewrite this just to kind of mold it into a form that, that looks like something we might need. Uh, minus i over h bar v phi e to the i v naught t over h bar. And you might ask, you know, how do I know to do this step here or, or this step here? How do I know to do that? And essentially, honestly, a lot of it comes down to intuition and practice. And the more that you do these problems, the more that you see these things. And quite frankly, a lot of the time, you probably didn't get it the first time through anyway. Um, it, it takes a few times to, to get it. So uh, let's keep going here. So um, we're going to redefine a couple things here just to help us see the answer here. We're going to say psi of x comma t is equal to I, uh, e to the i v naught t over h bar times uh, phi of x comma t. And we're not really redefining. We're actually doing exactly what the problem says because the problem asks us um, to add the v naught and show that we pick up um, that phase factor, that time, uh, I believe time dependent phase factor is what it calls it. So we're really showing that right now. So if you reverse this right here, you see that, okay, well, e to the i v naught t over h bar, divide that out to the other side, you're going to get e to the negative i v naught t over h bar, and just negative exponent, and then psi of x comma t. So with that, then uh, we're going to essentially, we've just shown that this line right here can actually reduce down into this, d psi dt equals i h bar over 2m d squared psi dx squared minus i over h bar v times psi. Okay, and you know, how do you do that? Okay, we'll look right here, that and that match. So really you can say d psi um, dt is right here. And then i h bar over 2m d squared psi dx squared. Okay, so again, the same substitution right there. 
and then the same substitution at the end here as well. Okay, and that's only true, um, you know, under this definition, this is only true because we added that v naught uh, constant term. All right, so essentially we got the same Schrodinger equation back, but we've redefined psi of x comma t to be this. And so we can confirm that we did, in fact, pick up this time dependent phase factor. All right, time dependent phase factor. So then the question becomes, how does this affect the expectation value of just some generic dynamic variable? Okay, so expectation values. And as we look at this, we're going to do a very general uh, proof here. So for some variable, so the expectation of va uh, value of some variable, variable q of x comma p, uh, we can say that that is equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity, negative infinity to infinity of phi star of x comma t times that q of x, and uh, p is actually negative i h bar d dx, so we'll just throw that in there, and then phi of x comma t dx. Okay, so that's just your generic expectation value. And then we're going to plug in here. Um, we know that this phi, as we defined it, is equal to that time dependent phase factor times psi. So we're going to actually write that in. So that is equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of psi of x comma t e to the negative i v naught t over h bar, and we're actually going to have the conjugate there, and then same thing, q x negative i h bar d dx, and then we have this right here again, psi of x comma t e to the negative i v naught t over h bar, but no conjugate this time, and then we have dx. All right, perfect. Well, when we write that, we can actually see that uh, when we do this conjugate, we're going to have a positive e to the i v naught t over h bar, and we're going to have an, a negative e to the, um, we're going to have e to the negative i v naught t over h bar, and then a positive one over here. The i is going to sw switch signs. And so when we do that, that's actually going to end up canceling those out um, because these are both terms independent of x. All they have is a t variable in them. And so we can cancel those out of this entire integral. And what we're then left with is the fact that the expectation vari value of that variable q is equal to that psi star times the variable q of x comma negative i h bar d dx times psi dx. Okay, so what's interesting to note here is that uh, then we can say the expectation of value of any vari variable q of x comma p is equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of phi star q of x negative i h bar d dx uh, times phi dx, um, and that is also equal to that line um, above uh, integral negative infinity to infinity of psi star. Same q, x negative i h bar d dx times psi dx. So these are equal for phi is equal to phi of x comma t, uh, which is equal to e to the negative i v naught t over h bar times psi. And for, of course, psi is equal to psi of x comma t. All right. So essentially, 
uh, to put it in simpler words, the expectation value doesn't uh, doesn't change. It actually is going to stay the same. And so with this problem, we've shown that we pick up the time dependent phase factor e to the negative i v naught t over h bar when we add the constant v naught, which is independent of x as well as t. We've also shown that there is no change on the expectation value of a dynamic variable when we do this.